Welcome back to another reaction and ting and ting and ting. I'm Mr. Giant, you know what I mean? And uh, I've been told to watch this here. This one is Tom Broker explains Canada to Americans, you know, and then uh, Jesse Jess is saying, hey, I'm going to tell you about it until you... Uh, you react to this so thank you very much Jesse Jess I had it there you know what I mean so here we go but let's see what Mr. Tom Broker has to say uh, about Canadians let's YouTube and Sim Sim and check this out this is the Peace Arch standing near the westernmost edge of the US Canadian border 30 miles south of the Olympic City between Blaine and Washington State and Surrey British Columbia this was dedicated in 1921 to commemorate the treaty that ended the War of 1812 between the U.S. and Great Britain. Remember, Canada was a British colony. That was a long time ago, but the inscription on the arch sums up the relationship. May these gates never be closed. May these gates. We share more than a long border, of course. No data line can divide our joint stewardship of a treasure of natural riches. From the Atlantic to the Pacific, and back again. Shorelines, wild rivers, and great lakes, vast forests and grasslands, precious ore buried in majestic mountains, and wildlife everywhere. From sea to shining sea. Canada and the United States share another unique quality. They're immigrant nations, destinations for people around the world who long for political freedoms, economic opportunity. And a long tradition of compassion. Let's not forget academic opportunity. The nations have the largest trading relationship in the world. One and a half billion dollars transacted every day. The two-way trade as the Ambassador Bridge between Detroit and Windsor alone equals all American exports to Japan. And we're so comfortable as neighbors. 200 million, 200 million people across the common border every year. Canada, some may be surprised to learn, is America's largest oil supplier, and the United States is... Wait, Canada is America's largest oil supplier? You don't hear that. All you hear is, oh, the oil coming from the Middle East, you know, we should be self-sufficient, you know what I mean? You get, no, these people don't like us, meaning the... the People from the Middle East don't like us and we're getting our oil from them and they price gorging us and blah, 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 blah. Oh, wait. Let's, let me go back. Let me. Did I hear that right? Hold on. Let's see what Mr. Tom Broker is saying here. Hold on a minute here. ...people across the common border every year. Canada, some may be surprised to learn, is America's largest oil supplier. And the United yeah. States is Canada's number one tourist destination. In a snapshot, Canada is a huge country, second largest in the world next to Russia, but its population is only about a tenth the size of the United States, 34 million, split into 10 provinces and three territories. 90% of Canadians live within 100 miles of the U.S. border, residing in world-class cities, thriving farms and smaller towns, with good reason. Life in the Canadian North is only for the party. It is remote and oh so cold. The coldest day ever recorded in North America occurred in 1947 in Snag, Yukon. See, I don't care how cold it is there. I would like to visit just to see it, you know. Coming from the tropics and thing, you know what I mean? I man would like to see it. I would have to do some research to prepare for it because I know that my tropical body, even though I live in America and it gets cold here, will not be ready for that kind of cold. I still want to see it though. Oh, see one of these bears walk around the ice or something like that. From a distance, of course. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, I would like to see that. I would definitely like to see that. Visit. There's no way I'm going to live in that cold. I could tell you that. And I could tell by, you know, the fact that most people don't live there. Most of the population don't live there means that most people can't handle it. I know I definitely wouldn't be able to handle it. But... I'd like to experience it. Minus 81 degrees, not including wind chill. Minus 81. Oh my goodness. Canadians are so generous. They share with us their brightest stars in music, comedy, acting, sports, I knew that. and journalism. 
Oh, he's from Canada. And if you're in a fight, you want the Canadians on your side. They were in World War II before we were. Didn't know that. Well, I knew that, but you don't know. A lot of people don't know that. Allies in Afghanistan, you never hear about them being there. You never hear about them saying that, you know, it's the Canadians are there helping. You never hear about that. It's like a one-sided story, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, we do, we do, we do. We don't hear nothing about the Canadians do, too. Uh, I watched something about the UN and the, the peacekeeping forces, and Canada was uh, really involved in that. And that I knew, that I knew, uh, you know, every time I heard about the UN, I heard, I heard about Canadians and stuff, you know, and the peacekeeping forces with the, uh, the blue helm hats or helmets or whatever you want to call it. But I didn't even know that they were in Afghanistan too. I mean, I'll be honest, it's the first time I've heard that. Interesting. Even their diplomats have been there for us. In 1980, a year before the conclusion of the Iranian hostage crisis, six American embassy personnel would escape from Iran in an operation organized by Canadian Ambassador Ken Taylor. The United States is thanking Canada for what? Those six American diplomats from Iran. Taylor hit the American Never knew that. embassy with storm, created fake Canadian passports, then flew the Americans out of Tehran with a bogus cover story. The six in disguise as a mob-looking Hollywood film crew allegedly researching a prospective science. Yeah. Now, all these years later, Taylor has admitted he was formally working for the CIA. And if the Iranians had discovered he was an American spy, he would have been in big, big trouble. Big trouble. In our darkest hours, Canada has been with us. On September 11th, as the United States shut down its airspace, Canada instituted Operation Yellow Ribbon, landing 239 U.S. bound flights with 33,000 passengers at 17 different Canadian airports. Didn't even know that. Didn't know that. Man, you all the Canadian, you all dip into everything, you know what I mean? Always there to help and thing. And yet, you know, people keep saying that you're the little brother up north. It's like they just dismiss that Canada is there sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Don't hear much about Canada at all than where I am here. You know what I mean? That's crazy. That's crazy. And then, amid the uncertainty that followed, entire communities housed and fed those thousands of passengers for days afterward. Beautiful. In the long history of sovereign neighbors, there never has been a relationship as close, productive, and peaceful as the U.S. and Canada. We share a continent and so much more. <laughs> Speaking before the Canadian Parliament, President Kennedy summarized the relationship this way. Geography has made us neighbors. History has made us friends. Economic has made us partners. And necessity has made us allies. Those of nature have so joined together, said Kennedy, let no man put asunder. Of course, there are some distinct differences in the culture. The American fans of these games will be unfurling the stars and stripes at every opportunity and chanting USA, USA. The Canadian Prime Minister had to go before Parliament yesterday and urge Canadians to engage in what he called an uncharacteristic outburst of patriotism, saying, don't be afraid to wave those flags. We'll apologize to the world for our immodesty later. So that's a big difference, Al. He hopes he has to do it very often. You know what struck me in that piece among among all of the items, there are more people in California than there are in all of Canada. But wow. Canada has a stronger and more sound economy at this point as well. That's a distinct difference between the two. Perfectly put. Thank you, Tom. See you during the week. Wow. 
And that short piece, that was only six minutes, I learned so much. I learned so much in that short piece. Hey, Jesse Jess, thank you for uh, suggesting that I watch this here. You know, open my eyes to a lot of things, you know what I mean? But I guess it's, 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 it's pretty uh, safe to be uh, a quiet partner like that to take it all in nobody's really saying well Canada you know we got to get them you know because they're partners with them and they're helping them out you know what I mean so maybe it's best that it's like a silent partnership but at least it should be acknowledged and uh, expressed more you know what I mean but uh, I have to tell you man the last uh, uh, Seeing that Canada Heritage Minutes to begin with and then having Canadians come into the comment section and tell me, you know, go read more, you know, uh, get more videos and watch more videos. And I have been doing that and, you know, it's astounding the, the contribution that Canada has given to the world. Now, you know, some of you all put in the comment section, you're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But it's, you know, it's good to know the good things more so that uh that is done you know what i mean of course there's always people are going to go well let's look at they did this and they did that and they did the other and they really don't look at the good things you know what i mean but uh thanks for suggesting this for me because i learned uh, at least three or four different things from this little video you know hopefully you guys enjoy watching it with me and you learn a little bit too you know if you're not canadian uh about canada here you know and i'm going to keep watching some more stuff about canada I definitely am, man. Thank you all for watching this with me. You all take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.